In this tutorial, we will discuss about the influenza virus and this lecture is about the structure of the influenza virus and the life cycle or the replication of the influenza virus. In a single lecture, we will discuss both the things, means structure and life cycle or replication. Coming to the point, the very first point, the structure. Now, this structure will be explained from the inside to the outside, okay? From inner core to the external envelope. Now, what is present in the structure? Very simple. This influenza virus is actually an RNA virus, means this virus is having RNA as a nuclear material. So the nucleic acid that will be RNA, nucleic acid will be RNA. We have two types of the nucleic acids, RNA and DNA. So now this virus actually has what? RNA. And this RNA is very special type RNA, that is negative sense strained RNA. Very simple, negative sense strained RNA. Now a question rises, what is negative sense RNA? Negative sense strained RNA. Now what is this? This is a simple question being asked by the students. I will clear the answer of this question here when I am explaining the life cycle or the replication. Stay with us. Now let's move towards the next point. This RNA is covered by means of the capsid and this capsid plus RNA, they are collectively known as nucleocapsid. Got RNA is actually a nucleic acid. So we take the nuclear term from the nucleic acid and capsid is here. So when we combine them together, it is now nucleocapsid. Simple. So RNA and capsid, noun is nucleocapsid. Then there is another covering of protein, noun is matrix protein. After that, there is an envelope made up of lipid bilayer. Means two layers of the lipid combined together, they then wrap up this virus and that is actually known as envelope. So like this, influenza virus is RNA virus, which one? Enveloped one. And this RNA is negative sense strained RNA. Keep this in mind. Then, we have some proteins present on this envelope. That is, number one, hemagglutinin. Number two, neuraminidase. Remember, these proteins cover the entire virus, okay? Now, what are the functions of each and everything that I explained right now? Let's understand the functions in the life cycle or replication of this influenza virus. Consider that this is the influenza virus and this reached your respiratory tract and it got a site on this particular cell, virus and the cell. This virus will find its specific receptor on this particular cell. This is the receptor for this virus. And this virus will use its hemagglutinin and by means of which it will attach with that receptor. After attachment, this virus will be endocytosed. Means there will be the mechanism of endocytosis. This virus will move inside. After it moves inside here, inside the cell, the lysosomes are waiting for this particular virus. And you guys know that lysosomes are actually named as suicide bags. They are actually having very strong types of enzymes which are going to destroy particular things. Well, anyway, coming to the point, these lysosomes have a pH that is acidic. So acidic pH plus destructive enzymes and now these lysosomes will come and will interact with this particular virus and luckily this virus has got important function for this lysosomes these lysosomes won't destroy the genetic material of this particular virus but these lysosomes will actually help in uncoating of this virus so as these lysosomes interact with this particular virus these will cause the uncoating of this virus then it will release its genetic material that is nucleic acid and then this nucleic acid which is actually a negative sense rna it will find its way towards the nucleus as it reaches inside the nucleus, now we told you in the beginning that it is actually a negative sense strained RNA. Now what is mean by this? Such RNA which are negative sense, we mean by this term that these RNA are not able to attach to the ribosome and translate over there to synthesize the proteins. Means in short, negative sense RNA are not able to produce or synthesize proteins. So now what will they do? Very simple, they will reach the host nucleus here. Now inside the nucleus, there are several RNA available which are having the five prime cap and poly A tail. So what will happen then, very simple, these RNA will snatch these capes and tails from the RNAs. So that is what will happen, very simple, just concentrate. We have five prime capes and along with that we have poly A tails on the RNA. 
which are available over there. Okay. Now this negative sense viral RNA will snatch these capes and pori a tail from this particular RNA and it will attach those poly ATLs and 5 prime with itself. Like this, this RNA will become complementary RNA. Now, it is able to go and bind to the ribosomes and translate over there to synthesize proteins. Now, as this RNA reaches this ribosome for the sake of translation, so what will happen here? Very simple, the translation will happen here. And this translation will synthesize several proteins. Now, what are those proteins? Just concentrate the structure. Those proteins will be for the capsid, for hemagglutinin, for matrix, for uraminidase, means those proteins will actually synthesize all these proteins available in the particular virus. And along with that, a very special protein that is RNA polymerase. Now, these RNA polymerases, you know, enzymes are proteins in nature. Anyway, now these enzymes will reach the nucleus here if the viral RNA is waiting now that viral RNA before it undergoes the process of snatching the capes and poly ATL this RNA polymerase will produce or will synthesize a copy you can say it will synthesize a replica of this particular RNA now the next RNA which will be synthesized that will be again negative sense strained RNA so like this what will happen in the meanwhile all the entire proteins are synthesized okay here will be having the proteins number of proteins available and in the meanwhile I mean of this RNA polymerases there will be more copies synthesized of the same particular viruses so you can say now here we'll be getting more copies of negative sense strained RNA. Now, negative sense when they're coming out, they're not able to go and bind to this ribosome to synthesize protein. They will come here and they will assemble here. So now at the end, after the translation, we'll be having a number of proteins and we'll be having a number of RNAs. Now, these all RNA and proteins, they will start assembling okay assembly will be done after the assembly, packaging will be done. Now, this packaging will be just like this virus, means in each viral structure there will be eight rna collected how many eight rna strains collected so here we'll be having eight rna after that we'll be having the capsules or the same entire rna then we'll be having the matrix protein now remaining is envelope now this envelope actually this virus will take this envelope from the host cell so as this starts moving outside here what happens this virus will take an envelope from the host cell so as it is moving out a stage will come like this. Now this is the very stage after which the envelope will start completing and in the meanwhile these protein will start appearing on the surface. So we got the concept of hemagglutinin. It was used during the attachment phase and what remained is duraminidase. It is actually responsible to separate this particular virus from the host cell. So what will happen at the end? The entire newly synthesized virus will be available like this. So only point remaining will be attachment between the virus and the host membrane. Now what will happen here at this point, this neuraminidase will cleave this particular junction between the virus and the cell. So like this, then this newly synthesized virus will be free to go and find another cell and in fact that particular next cell so like this the cycle continues i hope you go out and if still you have a confusion anywhere drop in the comment box and thank you for watching